Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to begin looking at material in chapter 7 um, which deals with confidence intervals. So we've seen confidence intervals earlier, particularly when we were doing bootstrapping and they helped us give interval estimates for unknown values of population parameters. So um, we're going to take a similar look at material um, which is going to help us come up with ways that we can construct interval estimates for population parameters um, without doing the bootstrapping that we've seen before. So let's kind of consider, consider the question, um, maybe we want to know um, what, how, what's the average age of a person who's infected with COVID-19 in the United States. Um, so over here on the, on the right, we have some data, um, and this data comes from the um, CDC, so it's a um, you know reliable data source. But um, over here, all we're looking at are people that have gone to the hospital. Um, so people have checked into the hospital, they record their age, um, and then um, based on the severity, they might be released, they might be um, admitted into intensive care, and in uh, the worst case, maybe they, they die. Um, but again, this is not going to give us a good indication of the overall distribution of um, infected by age because we're really only looking at people that have gone to the hospital. Um, and so if we want to get a sense out of this for the whole population, this would mean including people that have never gone to the hospital. Um, either we would have to test the entire population and we see why um, there's lots of logistical reasons why we might not be able to do that. And so another way that we could try and come up with this estimate would be to pick a random sample, um, the larger the better. And in the case of doing a hypothesis test, maybe we have some idea about what this value might be. And we can set up a hypothesis test to test some competing claims. Like maybe I think the average age is less than 75 years old. Um, then we could test some claims about that. But it, oftentimes, like in the case of, of COVID-19, we might not have any idea. This is a new disease. We have no idea what this distribution is going to look like um, or necessarily um, what the average is. So we have no claim about this um, population. So instead, what we might need to do is set up an appropriate model, come up with estimates for the parameters in that model, and then um, construct an interval estimate. So the, the thing that we want to model in this case would be the sampling distribution. And so we've seen how we can approximate that by running simulations and bootstrapping. So the difference in this chapter is we're gonna come up with, we're gonna use um, models that we think should be good estimates for the sampling distribution as a means for constructing these interval estimates. Um, so let's kind of continue on um, this sort of idea of how can we come up with an, in, with an estimate for an unknown population mean. Okay, so if you're kind of sick about hearing of COVID-19 these days, um, let's take a look at an analogous example um, where the, the methodology that we use could exactly be applied to a situation like w estimating the, the mean age of infected people with COVID-19. So here, what we're going to think about is a population of um, all words in the song Raspberry Beret by Prince. Um, and so each word in this song um, has a, a certain number of letters in it. And so what we want to estimate is what is the mean length of all words in Raspberry Beret. Um, and so here's a case where maybe this is not that um, ridiculous to say we could calculate this exactly because we have all of the population data. But let's just assume that the population is so large that it's not really feasible for us to um, gather data from every individual in the population. So if we couldn't um, gauge every single word in the song, then instead what we could do is pick a random sample of 30 words and then calculate the mean number of letters in that sample. So um, for example, I picked a sample of 30 words myself. And my 30 words are highlighted in yellow here. So um, based on my sample, I've got a sample of um, 30 words that I've picked. The mean of my sample I've calculated 
is um, 4.3, and here are units, are letters. So that's how we're measuring length of words. And um, the variance of my sample is about 3.05. Um, so there's my sample statistics. And so now, um, based on this sample, um, my initial guess would probably be, I think the mean length of a word, of all words in um, the song, is about 4.3 letters. And so if you're curious where I got this sample from, I just picked this. This is not a random sample, actually. I picked out these 30 words and then calculated the average of those 30 words. And so based on that methodology, um, probably my sample, this sample that I've chosen here, is not going to be the best one to work with because I didn't pick this randomly. And um, I couldn't pick a sample from Raspberry Beret without having the word raspberry in it. Um, and um, I picked out some words and noticed that my words here tend to be a little bit longer maybe than what typical words are. So um, I hardly picked out any words that have one letter in it like I. And you can see that there's tons of words that have I in it. I didn't pick out a lot of one and two letter words. Um, and that's just because this is some bias that we have as humans that our eyes tend to get drawn to larger, more substantial things. So for the same reason, we wouldn't want to use data of people that have gone to the hospital as our sample because there's nothing random about that sample. Those were the sickest people that go to the hospital. And so our age estimate is probably going to be biased by that sample because it makes sense that the older people are the, are the people that tend to get sicker and need to go to the hospital where there may be a lot of younger people that are infected, we just never know about them because they never get tested because they never go to the hospital. So that's um, one thing to keep in mind in that when we're doing our sampling process, whenever possible, we want to make this as random as possible so that our sample is gonna resemble the population um, as closely as possible.